Hello, I'm Courtney Holland. Welcome to Episode 3, Season 4 of Save Our Towns, a series designed to guide and inspire those who are working hard in Appalachia to build strong communities. The episodes, created by Outreach and International Affairs of Virginia Tech, aim to celebrate what is great about small towns and also identify experts, resources, connections, and more. This time, your example of awesome story highlights a town where the projects just keep getting bigger and bigger. Then we check in with Pennington Gap, followed by Maxwell's number, a number that gives insights into Appalachia's coal country. Your expert tip focuses on planning for the jobs of the future. And as always, we close with three questions for our mayor. First, your example of awesome story. Andrea Brunet looks at a small town that took a little money and turned it into a lot, starting with the downtown lot where the first project was built. November will mark the two-year opening of the new library in Vinton, which in some towns might call for a small celebration. Here, the milestone is huge. The new library not only sports an outdoor movie screen, rooftop patio, and coffee shop, but it also became the inspiration for downtown renovation. Town officials leveraged the library project again and again, embarking on millions of dollars in spending that supercharged residential and business activity. The first key decision was to locate the library downtown, says Richard Peters, the town official responsible for economic development. For several decades in the town, not much had changed, and we were experiencing some blight, particularly in our downtown. So a lot of storefronts uh, weren't in the best repair. When the decision was made uh, to uh, construct a new library for Roanoke County, the leaders got together and made the decision that locating that, that hub of activity within the downtown perhaps would kickstart some new uh, revitalization. A second big building opened this past June, one that entices people to live in a repurposed school. The town partnered with the county to give tax breaks over 10 years to the local developer of a project that offers almost two dozen loft apartments. Working with the developer, the town also helped secure historic designation for the pre-1920s building, which could net almost a million dollars in state and federal tax credits. A similar project at a former high school is expected to create almost 100 living units, and the library's previous location, just outside the downtown hub, is expected to become the site of a popular chain restaurant. The initial $35,000 grant and those early planning efforts led to a $700,000 grant from the Virginia Department of Housing and Community Development. The town then set up a revolving business loan program and began to work more closely with property owners. The result? Renovated storefronts, better signs to help people navigate through town, and street lamps with better aesthetics. One grant after another, devoted to beautification, helped encourage entrepreneurship. Shop owners received money to put in new awnings, install lighting, and plant flowers. No more dreary vacant buildings and parking lots. Downtown now incorporates green spaces and upgraded streetscapes. To further develop the theme of library lofts and stores, the town recruited Twin Creeks Brewing Company, which opened Roanoke County's first craft brewery in fall 2016. There's a lot of energy and a lot of excitement about what the buzz that's going on in Benton. Um, so we've, we've worked considerably with those uh, businesses. We've created some incentive packages, some small loan programs, and really worked with them to, to help fit their needs. Um, so, so working with the businesses has been very important, but the, the, the relationship that we've continued and, and matured with Roanoke County has been probably the most key point to this. They had a lot of the assets and the property that's been redeveloped uh, with the former schools and the former library. So, so that partnership's been critical to all the, the recent success and, 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 and energy within the town. What the town really did well was to approach the county in a positive way. Uh, to talk to us about uh, how we could maximize the benefit of the investment that we were going to make in the town. And what we ended up finding was a, a nice uh, spot downtown right across from the uh, town administration building. And now there's a new uh, library with, which had an investment of about $11.2 million of uh, county funds. The town and the county partnered on the land purchase. Uh, there was a cost sharing, essentially a 50-50 split in the purchase of the property. Uh, because putting the library downtown did raise the project cost a little bit primarily because of the land acquisition cost. Being a bedroom community for Roanoke gave Vinton the advantages that proximity to a larger urban center provides. But as a town in three square miles with 8,000 residents and almost two decades of virtually no change, Vinton's metamorphosis from shabby to chic was far from assured. The library project, elevating a downtown property that had morphed from one use to another over the last 100 years, 
symbolizes a new attitude in town, according to Peters, who grew up here. Now people in Vinton believe they can make big things happen. Next, Melissa McEwen is back with her third installment on the town we're following for a year, Pennington Gap. People in Appalachia have higher mortality rates than the nation in seven of America's leading causes of death. In rural and economically distressed areas, like Lee County, Virginia, the gap is even more pronounced, so loss of access to health care resources can be devastating to residents. In fall 2013, the community was stunned when the local hospital, located in Pennington Gap, unexpectedly shut its doors, despite assurances from the managing company that closure was not an option. Pennington Gap's economy took a direct hit with the loss of nearly 250 jobs. The community suffered in other ways as well. Suddenly, the nearest hospitals for residents in Lee County, which stretches 70 miles across, were at least 30 minutes away. Well, it's really critical when you think about uh, families with, with family members having heart attacks and strokes, uh, you have car wrecks and you have uh, uh, lacerations and things that require immediate attention. And when you, when you have that, it's, it's a matter of emergency, it's a matter of life and death. The hospital closure was even more devastating for the town's elderly population, many of whom moved back to Pennington Gap to retire. Since the loss of the hospital, these people are, have medical needs that are not being met, and they're afraid that they would be located so far from a working hospital that they can't get the necessary care that they need in case of an emergency. The older generation doesn't want to come back to a town that doesn't have a hospital. That's, that means a lot to them, and I can understand that. I can understand them not wanting to come back here. Reopening the hospital in Pennington Gap has been a top priority for the town and the county, but the process has not been simple. The Lee County Hospital Authority, formed in 2014, went through lengthy purchase negotiations with the building's former owner. A certificate of public need from the Virginia Department of Health was also required. After talks over the past year with AmeriCorps Health, in late August, the authority signed a letter of intent to sell the building to the company, which specializes in rural hospitals. Few other details have been finalized. The hospital affects the people in so many different ways. It's really critical to get the hospital back Will Pennington Gap bring its hospital back? Stay tuned for an update in future episodes. We try never to let Maxwell play with fire, but here he is playing with water. Ah, Maxwell, he never does things halfway. Today's number is a half. Everybody gets that, right? We say a half loaf is better than none, or we say a glass is half full or half empty. On a more serious note, zeroing in on one half can help us understand some facts about the role of coal in the economy of Appalachia. At one time, Appalachia supplied half of the nation's coal. Not anymore. Half of the decline in U.S. coal company revenue between 2011 and 2015 came about due to international factors, mostly from a softening demand from China. And half of the decline in U.S. coal consumption came about due to readily available and cheap natural gas. Along with natural gas, wind, and solar power have become more affordable. Solar costs fell 85% since 2008, and wind costs fell 36%, according to the Center on Global Energy Policy at Columbia University. These factors are the main reasons why nearly 50 coal-fired units are projected to close in 16 states by the end of 2018. Four of those states are in Appalachia, Ohio, Tennessee, Virginia, and West Virginia. Research shows that coal mining operations most affected by the closures are not inside Appalachia, but out. To be sure, coal mining is in decline. Some 60,000 jobs have been lost since 2011. But to put that in perspective, look at West Virginia. By mid-century, the state had 125,000 coal miners. After 1950, companies began replacing men with machines, and West Virginia's number plummeted to less than 20,000, a massive drop that took place years before lobbying groups blamed environmental regulations for strangling the industry. America now has more than 200,000 solar workers, a number that far outstrips coal employment. Since 2010, this number has grown by over 100%. Now I forget, was this the glass half full or half empty? 
Next, some people may remember Linda Harris Dobkins as a Virginia Tech PhD student who later taught economics at Emory and Henry. We caught up with her as Joe Allison in Richlands, Virginia at a writer's conference. Author of a mystery series, Joe Allison is her pen name. Here she offers insights based on her track record in urban and regional economics. It's a matter of educating people for the jobs that are out there, not for the jobs that used to be. I mean, I've heard people say, oh, well, this coal job disappeared, as it's going to because of technology, and, or because the coal is disappearing, or the manufacturing plants went out that made fabric and, and stuff that's not gonna be made here anymore. But there are many things, I mean, these are people who are willing to work hard, or they would not have worked in textile mills and coal mines, you know? But what they need is, the, is someone to give them the tools to do the work that's needed. And that's, that's tough. The advantage goes to the towns that can seize that advantage and seize educational advantages for their population. You can read a transcript of the complete interview at the Save Our Towns website. Click on the Connect with Experts tab. And now, a reminder about Virginia Cooperative Extension. Extension agents and specialists live and work around the Commonwealth, dedicated to subjects such as livestock quality, land management, and youth development. On the Save Our Towns website, click on the Extension tab. There you can learn much more. You'll find extension agents listed along with their areas of expertise and contact information. Now we return to Vinton to ask three questions of the mayor. I'm Brad Gross. I'm the mayor of the town of Vinton. I guess if I had to use one word, it would be energized. Uh, I think there's a few other words that would work, such as exciting or progressive, or maybe even friendly, or definitely friendly. Uh, most of our uh, tracts of land are small, so if we have a big challenge is the lack of large tracts of land that could be developed. If we had uh, large tracts of land, I think we would have uh, opportunities for larger businesses. We could develop them into uh, industrial parks and things of that nature. We are uh, very fortunate in that we have uh, big city amenities in a small town friendly atmosphere and we also are right next to the Blue Ridge Parkway. We're very excited and very energized about our downtown. Uh, we do have some uh, really significant and really great opportunities in our business community at the present time and I think our uh, citizens are quite engaged now. Would you like to nominate your town for an example of Awesome Story? We'd love to hear from you. To view past episodes and to dive deeper into resources and a wealth of information about small towns, go to the Save Our Towns website. And please send your thoughts to saveourtowns at vt.edu. We read and respond to every email. This is Episode 3 of Season 4. Be sure to join us next time. Thanks for watching.